Do we have any questions yet? One right at the back. Can you turn this one up? Cheers. I have lots of questions, but um, I'll just ask a couple. So, um, I really enjoyed all of your talks. Ben, you were so great. Thank you. <laughs> um, in, in a world where making images is so prized, but making photographs you know, has the possibility of being devalued with mediums like iPhones and the instantaneous nature of pretty much everything that we do on social media. Why do you think as professional photographers there will always be a field for professional photography? Um, or do you think that field is maybe disappearing? And do you think it's maybe open to just anyone with a camera? Does anyone want to answer that first? Ben, you're right. <laughs> Um, I think it's slowly disappearing and it'll keep going as long as, you know, technology's <coughs> technology is uh, just going to obviously get better and better and better and better and that'll just open up people's skill levels, you know, just dramatically because when I was at uni it was film and film and so you had to wait a few days to get your film back and but now obviously it's just so easy to see your mistakes and then correct them and then so people are just improving far faster than it could ever be before so obviously i think the um the market's closing a bit but for you know advertising and all that sort of stuff there's always going to be the need for um high end photography um but i think it's a really good thing that people are getting better cuz it just means that the quality of photography is increasing and i think that's a good thing that's my answer. Anyone else? Does anyone else want to answer that? I agree. I agree. <laughs> do, you, do you think, having said that, that you off, do you feel a bit privileged that you had that experience? I'm like on film that you couldn't, I mean like I feel like I just take photos all the time. I've got like a thousand photos. Don't you feel like that you kind of feel like you've had a little bit more to think about? You know, do you feel like do you feel lucky in that way? Because I think you're kind of lucky. I feel, I feel really lucky that, uh, Hang on. Sorry. Sorry. I'm talking to the mic. I feel really... Oh God. <laughs> I feel extremely lucky. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And I never forget the um, last day of pretty much um, my... Um, I think my... Oh, I can't remember what class it was, but it was my, one of my favourite tutors, Andrew Campbell. He was a bit of a mentor to me still. He... Um, he bought out a Canon 1D and said, this is a digital camera, forget everything. <laughs> and it was like the last week of third year. I was like, ah, thanks, pal. And like, you know, image transfers were, uh, he showed us how you could tether it to the computer and, and shoot and it took five minutes to get one, you know, eight meg file or four meg file to the computer. And it was so amazing, it was ridiculous. But to answer your question, yeah, I feel totally privileged. Now at PSC there's no dark rooms or anything, it's all just digilabs and and uh, yeah, it's a bit sad. I'm <laughs> 35, it's okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I think there's actually a real uh, turning back towards film. I've had four briefs in the last year that need to be shot on film and you really need to have the knowledge and nuance about um, the technique to know that. Um, I had to go, I was so nervous. I've never experienced that nervousness without being able to see my preview. And I think that what sets a photographer apart is their relationship with their subject, let that be an architecture or a person, rather than the technique of the camera. So yes, you can be, you know, Instagram and all these cameras are making you be able to take a good photograph, but it's, I mean, I know I'm not hired for my technique. I'm not that great at it, but I think I'm hired because of my interaction with my subjects and creating a mood more than anything. And I hope um, that stands for something. What was, what was, sorry, can I just... Hi. What was their reasoning for shooting on film? I, oh, look, I think it's a bit fashionable to start with. And uh, there's, there's a certain nuance in film and a warmth and a texture that you can't create in with a digital camera. I think there's, they wanted that instantaneous feeling. And um, go get, you know, go shoot on film and see what a roll of film looks like. It's, it's quite beautiful. Yeah. 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 I'll go back here. I just want to add, sorry, quickly. Um, I, also, I also think there is a beautiful 
thing to film. But I also think that a lot of clients ask for film because it is cool and all that sort of thing, but wouldn't have a shit of an idea if you shot it on digital and put a filter over it. <laughs> and they would not have a freaking clue. Don't tell them that, though. <laughs> so true, though. <laughs> So, um, so my question was actually going to sort of write off the first question, is that do you find that as a photographer, that because anyone can almost be a photographer in the sense that you actually end up becoming a stylist, you become a director, you end up being more than just a photographer on set, or, or I'm in the situation? Um, I shoot a lot of interiors for interior designers. And a lot of them will say to me, uh, what colour cushion do you think I should p put here? Or do you think this chair should go here? Or what do you think of that? And I don't have a clue. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm finding now that, yeah, that's definitely the case. Like, um, if I do flat lays, for instance, I have to do the flat lay. I have to um, and do the flat lay and shoot the flat lay. Not, it's not just a case of shooting anymore. It's, yeah... Sometimes it's dressing people. Um, sometimes it's art directing as well. So Sorry for some yeah. of us. What's a flat lay? <laughs> uh, clothes on the ground. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I guess if you look at it from that perspective where you're saying, you know, do you have to take on other roles? It's like anything. So I want to make a beautiful image and I'll do whatever I need to do to make that image. I'll climb a tree. I'll kick bottles out of the way because I'm not going to touch them. Um, I'll get up on a bin. It, it doesn't matter as long as you make the image what you want the image to be. Sometimes I'll leave things in and people will be like, you put that there. I actually shot with Eddie the other night and there was a taxi parked in front of a Macatron piece and we looked at the, the image on the back of the camera and it was sort of like it looks contrived. So we woke the bloke up and got him to move on. But it, it's about getting the image that you want and I think everybody here has that passion for creating a beautiful image and that's why they'll go that extra mile to style, to change lighting and things like that. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think there's a real shift in photography. It is becoming an easier technique. I've um, certainly moved into the moving image. That's becoming part of our kind of expectation to be able to shoot, you know, sh short, f short form video if that's behind the scenes of a fashion shoot or documenting events. So our cameras have allowed that technique to be quite a natural progression. Uh, yeah, and it's about your ideas, I hope. And I think the things that always have gained me the most interest are the, are the ones that are my, um, your ideas, which can't be solved with Instagram yet. No. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. No, I, 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 yeah. No, I. Um, I guess the question really is sort of like, um, other than just being a photographer on set or or I'm um, in the situation, what what are more do you do? Whether it be um, become the stylist or become the director mm. or things like that. I think on on yeah on pretty much ninety percent of my shoots, I've got a stylist and a and and. I've got a stylist and um, art director and creative director and everybody sort of just in there anyway. So there's not a hell of a lot I need to do besides um, make sure that I've got a good rapport with the um, subject. Um, so I guess that's as far as I go personally. That's that's nothing's really changed for me so far. But yeah, probably will soon. Flat lays. I shoot flat lays same as Nicole. <laughs> Pain in the ass, but you know, cash money. So I tried by the photo booth. See, photo booth people. Hey, you did a nice <laughs> It's back on. You're all my favourite. Uh, love the talks. Just wondering with the pressure of commercial work, when you have I know that you're all great with planning the situation, but how, does, how do you go with, say, the pressure of a big job and knowing that there's so many unknowns like, how do you go into that with confidence that you know you can get something out of it because you've got all this money and time's at stake and you've got one chance and all that? Yeah. It's funny you bring this up right now. I've got a shoot in India next week for Ford and we've got a um, 
they've got sort of Australia, one of Australia's best car photographers shooting the car over there. And because I'm good with talent, the creative director has asked me to go over and shoot the talent. So the camera is going to be on the tripod, the guys, and you know, locked off. They're going to light the car with whatever, and then we're going to get the local talent in that aren't models or anything like that. They're just regular Joes. And um, I'm stressed out of my brain. Well, I'm not really. I'm pretty confident it'll be fine. But um, <laughs> use that second bit in the edit. Just. <laughs> um, but um, uh, it's it's. I think it's just. I don't, look, I don't even know. I, it's it scares me. You know, it always scares. It's always sort of frightening. I think going into shoots that have had so much money spent on it, and this is sort of probably the biggest shoot of my life, and so. Um, Hence the question being poignant to me right now. And um, I've got, you know, visas aren't getting approved at the moment and, um, and uh, flights haven't been booked yet because they still don't know the dates and I'm meant to be flying out on Tuesday next week. Personal issues, other jobs, it's all crazy. So, you know, it's all um, quite stressful but it's really, really super exciting at the same time and I sort of, I guess, relish in that aspect of it. That has... I, I feel like it's probably no more stressful than any other job that you're responsible for. Um, you know, I buggered my leg today and I can't shoot for five weeks. What do you do? And, you know, it's, it's, you're in the moment and it is what it is. Um, and, you're, I mean, I, when, when you're on the job, you almost don't worry about the money. You can't worry about the money or it gets too, um, you get too overawed with the whole thing. But... Um, you know, if I was a surgeon, I'd be probably more stressed. Anyone else? Sure. Apart from your subjects and your the environments that you shoot in, uh, where do you get your inspiration? I am, um, because I was actually going to talk about it in my talk and I blanked. Um, I, I feel like the type of photography that I do is pretty, um, what do you call it, it's like a niche market. Um, so I get my inspiration from other photographers, one of which I'm very lucky to be sitting next to right now. She's one of my favourite photographers, don't tell her. <laughs> anyway, um, then there's a landscape photographer who's in England and I get a lot from his lighting. Um, there's a musician photographer in Melbourne who I've spent a bit of time with and adapted some of his lighting skills to how I photograph. So I get my inspiration from the creative talents of other people and I try to apply that to my photography. <laughs> it's your turn. Um, oh, just, I mean, life, conversations, people, music, doc, great documentary. Um, yeah, the light in the morning when you wake up in the winter, the mist, everything. Most of the time, when you're having a good day. <laughs> yep, I concur with that. I think um, all the photos in my personal work are mostly people smiling and happy and I like seeing that, so it's quite, quite enjoyable to make people do that. Yeah. Come to you in a minute, Eddie. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, just for the business side of things, do you find that you, or do you guys um, outsource your editing or you, like management of uh, booking your schedule, that kind of thing? How do you sort of keep control of that? Anyone want to go first? Um, <laughs> Um, I do it all myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do it all myself. I do. Yeah, there we go. I outsource mine to Bangladesh. Okay. And <laughs> I do a lot of I do a lot of um, um, online fashion stuff. So it's just contouring of the model and the mannequin or whatever, and three uh, making three D mannequins and stuff. So um, yeah, it's just too cheap to not 
do it really and um, so that probably kills the industry a little bit for some people but it's sort of I think a bit normal now. Um, yeah. And uh, Oh yeah, I just yeah. Bangladesh. But retouching. Is his yeah. name Razib Akmel. <laughs> 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 he told me I was his best part his best his best um uh yeah anyway. Eddie, you still got that question? Um, first of all, congratulations. That was a great talk from each one of you. Um, my question, there's two parts. One, how old are you? And that probably leads to the next question. Um, is that how, how do you deal with these younger people coming through um, on um, cheaper pricing? Are you going to start this off by saying your age before everyone else has to answer this? Oh. Uh, I'd also say if you don't want to say your age, you don't actually have to. I decline to answer your age question, Eddie. You already know the answer to the question. I'll be more younger than Eddie. Younger than Eddie, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, Eddie. Um, I don't. I, I am part-time photographer, um, so I don't see myself in competition with people to try and get like financially. Um, the competition that I have is just like there's some kids who do the same kind of thing that I do who are more keen and obviously have more energy and suck, I mean, kiss ass a lot. <laughs> I'm really inappropriate. Um, they kiss ass a lot better than I do um, and that's the competition I'm up against. Um, was that, does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> mm, how do you deal with it? Um, Age Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm older than Eddie. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, how do we deal with pricing against younger people? Um, well, I have no idea. Like, in, in the last month, I've had two people tell me I've underquoted uh, and they've been nice enough to tell me and they've told me to bump up my quote, which they're the kind of clients you want. And then on the other hand, I quoted severely underquoted for a job for an advertising company and they told me I was way too expensive. So, and they used to? I don't know. I don't think they used to. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, it's, it's a conundrum. I'm still, like, after all this time, I have no idea how to deal with quoting and how to meet people's expectations of what they want. Um, it's a really interesting question. I'm 33, by the way. Uh, I think I under, severely underquoted for the first eight years of my life because I was so insecure about me being any good at what I did. So I was one of those people, but only because I just had no faith in my skill. Uh, I recently got an agent in the last few years and when I told her what I quoted for a portrait, she nearly fell off her chair because it was, four, you know, it was about three quarters of what I should be charging. So having someone as your backer and saying, you know what, this is kind of standard and you're worth it. It's been huge for me and my career. Uh, but it's about self-confidence, I think, more than anything. I don't think people try to underquote other people. I think it's more about them not valuing themselves quite yet. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that. And I think it's about education as well. Like all the assistants that sort of work with me, we took, they asked me, what should I quote for this job? And it's, we kind of just talk about what do you think um, what do you think you're worth for the job and what's the sort of industry standard for the job? And of course, when you're 22 or 23, I'm 35, Eddie, I think you know that. Um, when, when you are that young and you're just out of uni or whatever, you, you just you have no idea what to quote. Like no one tells you or ever. So, and we, everybody went through it. And so I think it's about trying to let people, especially like just, yeah, yeah let people know um, and be open about what, what industry standard prices are. Um, and then um, bad mouth people that underquote still. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Never bad mouth anybody. Um, I think that will wrap it up there, folks. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you so much to our speakers.